ayatul kursi starts ayah number 255 ayatul kursi starts allah la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum allah there is no deity except him the ever living the sustainer of all existence la taquzu sinatu wa la nawm neither drowsiness overtakes him nor sleep lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi ard to him belongs whatever in heaven and whatever on earth manzal lazi yashfa indahu illa bizni who is it that can intercede with him except by his permission ya lamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum he knows what is presently before them what will be after them wala yuhituna bi shay'in min ilmihi illa bi ma sha and they encompass not the thing of his knowledge except for what he wills wasiya kursi yuhu samawati wal ard his footstool extends over the heaven and the earth wala yauduhu hifzuhuma and their preservation tires him not wa huwa aliyul azim and he is the most high most great this aya aitul kursi is the greatest aya of the quran because it talks about who the greatest one it mention who the greatest one allah azwajal and in this aya five names of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are mentioned and almost 20 attributes of allah are mentioned that is why we see that this aya is very very powerful so much so that the recitation of this aya in the night is a means of protection from shaitan all night long when a person recite this aya in the night he is safe from shaitan for how long for the entire duration of the night in hadith we learn that when a person goes to bed and he recite ayatul kursi then there will be a guard from allah who will protect him all night long and shaitan will not be able to come near him until fajr so remember that abu huraira radhiyallahu anhu who said this to him shaitan said this to him when abu huraira radhiyallahu anhu caught shaitan repeatedly in the night so what happened shaitan said this is to abu huraira and the next morning when abu huraira radhiyallahu anhu told the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about this prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that he is a liar but he has spoken the truth at this occasion which means that when a person does recite ayatul kursi in the night when he goes to bed then what will happen until morning he is protected he is safe from who shaitan so this aya ayatul kursi what is mentioned the names of allah are mentioned who described allah azawajal is described the first description of allah that is given in this aya is the name of allah and the name of allah is very powerful and blessed name tabarak asma rabbukal zil jalali wal ikram the name of your lord meaning the name of your lord allah the name is blessed so here in aitul kursi the beautiful names of allah tabarak asma rabbikal lazi zil jalali wal ikram the name of your lord meaning the name of your lord allah that name is blessed so this name is powerful and here in hadith we learn that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when you hear the barking of dogs and braying of donkeys in the night then seek refuge with allah a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem because these creature they see what you do not see and limit going out when the footsteps have quitted meaning outside when there is silence when there are no people walking around when everybody is gone to sleep prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said don't go out at that time means limit your going out at that time why because indeed allah spreads in the night whoever of his creation that he wills close the doors and say the name of allah you know when you close the door say bismillah and close it so when you close the door at night Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said say bismillah why because indeed shaitan cannot open a closed door on which allah name was mentioned so when you are closing a door and you mention the name of allah the shaitan cannot open that door and 
the name of Allah is so powerful. So here the fact is that person who does not mention the name of Allah when he is doing something important, then in reality he is becoming a companion of shaitan. And he is becoming a helper of shaitan. Why? Because he is letting shaitan have a share in what he is doing. Prophet ﷺ said, The screen between the eyes of the jinn and nakedness of the children of Adam, when one of you enters the area of relieving once, is saying Bismillah. Means, when we go to washroom, we are unclothed. Then what is that will screen us from shaitan saying Bismillah before entering it. So Bismillah saying the name of Allah. This is like you know when you say uh, Bismillah like you know even in washroom you can say Bismillah but uh, not in the uh, toilet. Here when we enter the washroom before that you should recite the wah. Not after entering, but okay, before entering it. But for Bismillah, it is allowed, especially for the wudu and when you are taking shower. And this is something that brings a barrier between us and shaitan. That protect us from shaitan so much so that even at the time of intimacy, having relationship with husband and wife, make dua that time. Say Bismillah and Allahumma jannib bi shaitani, jannib bi shaitan, wa ma razaqtana. So also we learn that Iblis asked Allah that all of your creation ha has its uh, a proportionate provision. So, oh Allah, what is it for me? Every creation has its own provision. The animal, they have their own food, have their um, like, you know, own food. Human beings have their own food. So isn't that so? Iblis said, what is for me? Allah said that on which my name is not mentioned. So any food that is eaten and the name of Allah is not mentioned over there, then who has share in that food? Who will benefit from it? Shaitan will benefit from it. So when we say the name of Allah, what are we doing? We are protecting ourselves from the influence, from the participation of Shaitan. So how is it that we secure our provision? How is it that we secure our action, our deeds by taking the name of Allah, the most powerful name and the most powerful word of Allah. And then in Aital Kursi, the next thing we learn is La ilaha illahu, that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Saying La ilaha illallah, this is Abdalul Zikr. This is the most superior Zikr. The best zikr, the best form of remembering Allah is what? Saying la ilaha illallah. Nov said, if the skies and the earth, whatever is with them, if they are replaced on one side of the scale, it, if they are placed on one side of the scale and la ilaha illallah is placed on the other side of the scale, then the later will be heavier. Which one will be heavier? The one which has la ilaha illallah. This is why the person who believes in La ilaha illallah and the person who says La ilaha illallah with all his heart, even if he ends up saying it only once, then what will happen? If he dies, where will he end up? Eventually in Jannah. There's a hadith. A man came to Prophet Wasallam at the battle of Khaybar and he embraced Islam. He said, La ilaha illallah. And immediately he participated in the battle. And what happened? He passed away. He was killed in the battle. Prophet ﷺ, when he buried him, he said, This is a man who has not even made one sujood. But he will enter Jannah. Why? Because he said, La ilaha illallah. How heavy is this statement? How powerful is this statement? So Allah, la ilaha illa hu, say it with all your heart. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illa hu. Al hayyul khayyum, the ever living, the sustainer of all existence. So al hayyul khayyum, these are the names of Allah. And remember, these are no ordinary names of Allah. These names are what? 
ismullahil azim so the greatest names of allah such names which when a person says when he is making dua then his dua will be accepted this is why we see that at battle of badr when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in extreme difficulty he was in extreme worry what did he say ya hayyu ya qayyum bi rahmatika astaghis can you repeat it ya hayyu ya qayyum bi rahmatika astaghis o ever living o eternal one i seek your help by your mercy means you help me ya hayyu ya qayyum we learn that at one occasion a man made dua he came to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was near him and anas radhiyallahu anhu was also near by and this man he made dua saying ya badiyu samawati ya hayyu ya qayyum inni as'aluka o originator of the heavens and the earth o ever living and eternal i ask you prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said do you know what this man has made dua with he said by the one in whose hand is my soul this man has called upon allah by those names which when he is called by then allah accepts the dua meaning when a person makes dua and he takes these names of allah ya hayyu ya qayyum then the dua is it rejected no way it's going to be accepted so whenever we want our duas to be accepted then what should we do make dua with the names of allah neither drowsiness overtakes him nor sleep to him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth who is it that can intercede with him except by his permission he knows what is presently before them what will be after them and they encompass not the thing of his knowledge except for what he wills then we learn in ayat al kursi the name of allah subhanahu wa taala here the kursi of allah subhanahu wa taala what is the kursi of allah the kursi of allah is different from his arsh the arsh is the throne and the kursi the scholars the sahaba they interpreted this is a footstool of allah and how huge is this kursi when compared to the skies the earth the entire creation universe that we know about what we learn from hadith is that the entire universe the sky the earth compared to the kursi of allah are like a ring in a desert you know like a ring in a desert you see the huge room imagine if there is a ring toss somewhere on the floor imagine the size of the ring compared to this room then imagine the size of that ring compared to an open huge massive desert endless desert what's the comparison here imagine how small the samawat and earth are allah says wasiya kursi yuhu samawati wal ard so huge is his kursi then imagine the magnitude of his throne of his arsh then imagine the greatness of allah subhanahu wa taala this is why wa huwa al aliyul azim is exalted the highest one there is no one higher above allah and he is azim the greatest one there is no one greater than allah this is why who is it that we should exalt the most allah subhanahu wa taala and who is it that we should remember the most allah subhanahu wa taala fasabbi bismi rabbikal azim glory the name of your lord who is your lord azim the great one and when uh, when is it that we say subhana rabbiyal azim in what position in the position of ruku abu huraira radhiyallahu anhu reported that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he who says in the morning subhanallah al azim wa bihamdihi the person who says in the morning subhanallah al azim wa bihamdihi 100 times and in evening also 100 times then no one in the creation will have the same level as him so what would you like to be at the top of all the people of the world would you like to do something that is best so what is that we need to do subhanallah al azim wa bihamdi 100 times in morning and evening so 
if we say quietly now, Subhanallah, Hilazim, Babi Hamdi. Quietly we can say, just for a few seconds, isn't it? Subhanallah, he would be hamdihi. Subhanallah, he'll azim wa bihamdihi. It doesn't take much time though. We can try it. And Allah choose it. Allah choose it for himself. So what is our duty? Accept Allah's decision. Do amal. Let's move to next ayah. There shall be no 